Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which aims to help uh, provide digital slide resources for training and educational purposes to members of the Digital Pathology Association and to uh, others throughout the world. So our program today focuses on a topic in soft tissue and perhaps GI liver pathology as well. Um, it's a relatively young person who's been experiencing weight loss and is found to have a rather large liver mass. <clears throat> on, um, this patient came to us in uh, referral of his pathologic materials uh, to evaluate uh, this liver mass. Uh, which had been biopsied at an outside uh, hospital. Now, in a younger patient, what do we think of in terms of uh, liver lesions? Well, certainly fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma is uh, often a disorder of uh, younger patients. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma or other uh, vascular lesions and potentially embryonic sarcoma uh, can occur in younger patients. On the benign side, of course, adenomas, focal nodular hyperplasias, uh, vascular lesions like hemangioma, uh, of course, can affect younger patients. And uh, depending on the background, uh, various uh, liver cysts, uh, either echinococcal or otherwise, uh, can also present as uh, rather large liver masses at an early age. Um, so our patient uh, did not appear to have a cystic lesion, um, and a biopsy was performed, which we see here, several core biopsies uh, from the liver tissue. Uh, here it's sort of intermediate magnification. We see a little bit of normal liver, and then we see this uh, neoplastic uh, proliferation or abnormal proliferation through much of the uh, uh, length of the uh, core biopsies. Uh, there is a nested uh, pattern, so we might wonder about uh, uh, carcinomas, uh, but notice we also have some open spaces here um, and a fair degree, fair amount of uh, blood uh, in the background. Um, looking at these cells, they have uh, quite a, an epithelioid appearance, um, and uh, we can see that they have a malignant appearance. These uh, nuclei are large. We have macronucleoli. Um, and again, we have quite a bit of uh, intervening blood extravasation, sort of a hemorrhage uh, surrounding these nests as well. So, uh, you know, we might wonder about uh, uh, epithelial neoplasms. Uh, this doesn't look like the usual fibrolamellar uh, carcinoma. We don't see dense bands of uh, uh, fibrous tissue. Um, but certainly the cells have a malignant appearance. Well, a uh, panel of immunochemical stains was done, uh, which showed that these cells were um, all not reactive for any cytokeratin, uh, low molecular weight, high molecular weight, uh, 7, 20, uh, anything of that sort uh, was uh, excluded. Uh, because of the, uh, the red cells, and uh, also because perhaps we see here that we have these sort of cavernous uh, spaces with sort of um, uh, almost tombstone-like pattern cells extending into these lumina, the possibility of a, a vascular tumor was uh, entertained. We've mentioned that those lesions are on uh, the differential. Um, and so in this situation, uh, here we can see um, one of these uh, immunohistochemical stains with our panel of uh, reactivity. Um, this is uh, the stain, I believe, for um, uh, ERG. And we can see that it's got nice uh, membranous uh, positivity, um, and then a second follow-up stain uh, shows that we also have uh, nuclear positivity.
Well, I've misspoken, of course. This is the ERG stain, uh, which shows the nuclear positivity. The previous slide was a CD31 stain, which shows the uh, marker on the uh, cytoplasmic uh, membrane. So two positive vascular markers uh, raises the possibility for uh, uh, various other uh, angiosarcomatous lesions. Um, uh, with those things, uh, the diagnosis of epithelioid angiosarcoma was made. Um, and uh, this is a lesion which is uh, rather uncommon <clears throat> in the liver. Um, it does occur over a wide age range um, and typically is more frequently seen in males. Um, although many earlier reports <clears throat> had noted the association between uh, various uh, toxins like uh, thorotrastal vi or vinyl chloride, arsenic, and so forth, these are relatively uncommonly detected in the uh, current cases. <clears throat> this tumor uh, may occasionally also express epithelioid markers, such as cytokeratin. Uh, in our particular case, it expressed EMA. Um, and uh, I think interestingly, as we looked and, and saw that, I, I think you can see how a pseudoglandular hep hepatocellular carcinoma could be uh, uh, in the differential, potentially cholangiocarcinoma, hemangioblastomas, and so forth. Uh, would also enter into the differential considerations. Um, the molecular changes uh, can be of use in differentiating some of these uh, and confirming the diagnosis. Of course, we uh, have previously noted that fibrolamellar uh, carcinoma has a uh, PRKACA fusion gene with uh, uh, DNA JB1 or perhaps even loss of uh, PRKACA. Uh, as well. Uh, in our case, uh, testing was performed looking for the uh, CAMTA1 and TFE3 fusions. Um, sometimes these can be detected by immunohistochemistry, uh, but these were both negative uh, in our particular uh, situation. Uh, in general, angiosarcomas can have upregulation of uh, several of these uh, other uh, markers, uh, and gene pathways can be very active. Uh, in lacking either of these specific uh, markers, um, we were able to exclude this uh, diagnosis, which uh, might be a uh, consideration and potentially have a somewhat better prognosis than uh, the epithelioid angiosarcoma. So, uh, clinically, uh, this uh, lesion, epithelioid angiosarcoma, can present in a variety of other locations. This is an example uh, seen in the skin, uh, where you see these uh, violaceous raised nodules. Um, and uh, here is a representative immunohistochemical, excuse me, uh, uh, skin biopsy showing, uh, again, these uh, dilated, gaping vascular spaces. Uh, with uh, a, a very uh, epithelioid appearing um, cytology. Uh, this is forming a little bit more of a, a clearly vascular network than uh, our, les our lesion in the liver was, but the uh, epithelial morphology is very similar, epithelioid morphology. Uh, here's another example, uh, again, uh, deep in the skin, um, and uh, we can see these uh, very nice plump uh, cells, prominent nucleoli, um, and a very epithelioid type architecture, but with uh, some vascular type spaces. Um, I think the uh, takeaway message from these, of course, is that, that these patterns can very closely mimic uh, carcinoma. Um, and so uh, in any epithelioid or very eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm type of uh, tumor, uh, the possibility of an epithelioid angiosarcoma has to enter into your clinical differential. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is epithelioid angiosarcoma involving the liver, uh, truly an unusual uh, disorder, uh, but one which raises the opportunity to talk about some of the molecular changes that can be seen, some of the differential both in the liver as well as in other soft tissue sites that you may encounter. 
So I hope that's a useful case for you. Uh, we appreciate you uh, joining us and spending some time uh, considering these slides. Uh, the link to uh, study the digital slides themselves is available in the comments. Um, so please uh, take the opportunity to go back and review those after our discussion and see uh, what uh, further uh, insights you can gain from that study. Uh, once again, we hope that you'll uh, share this and uh, please subscribe to the channel that uh, helps uh, uh, us to get our message out and helps you to stay abreast of when future uh, releases are, are uh, provided. So until next time and our next uh, topic, uh, thanks so much for joining us.